since you've been gone. By Rainbow, since we've been gone, Steve. What's been going on, mate? Well, so much has happened, hasn't it, in the world, um, you know, politics and stuff. There's been an election and the like. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and our producer, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I say producer, <laughs> funny, yeah. uh, Carl Pilkington. Alright. Yeah, very good. We've been away for a while. I think uh, the last show we did was January 2004. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed whatsoever. Nothing's been mended. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I threw that away in the bin. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. I went. Before I left. Yeah, there are some of your, uh, your old bacon rinds. <laughs> <from that sandwich. laughs> yeah, yeah. The spare ribs on the floor. Yeah. yeah, nothing's changed at all. Oh, I, oh, no, that's not true. Um, uh, the listenership's changed. It went down slightly, didn't it, on the last Rage Hour? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is that, is that what happened? Did it go down slightly, Carl? <laughs> Uh, a little bit, I think. I don't think everyone gets new listeners because I think what happens is the reason it goes down just very slightly each time is that their old listeners die. Yeah. Uh, you know, Definitely. old Cure fans dying of yeah, you know, smack addictions. <laughs> yeah, gout. Yeah. <laughs> gout. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, well, I've never haven't listened to this um, station for a year and a half, so it's, uh, that's increased by one, <laughs> yeah. which is qu <laughs> probably quite a high percentage. Exactly. Um, so, uh, I, well, I, I mean. I suppose that, that my question, I suppose, to you, Rick, would be, you know, why now? Why, why have you come back now? You know, you're- Bored, bored of sitting at home. <laughs> right, you know. okay. Yeah. Because we're just here for six weeks. Six weeks. Um, well, we're standing in for Adam and Joe, aren't we? Yeah. Mm. Yeah? Uh, the tables have turned, I remember when they were standing in for us, but, uh, Yeah, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I, the only reason I'm here is because, um, my, um, my housekeeper cleans, um, between one and three. Oh, right, that's um, a good idea. So I just want to get out of the house. And, uh, are they, are they listening to XFM? Well, no, she doesn't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. I'm not made of money, Rick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I can help out, you know, a, a young immigrant lady, then, um, then I will do. And, and, and there are so many things I can do for her, in yeah. so many ways. Yeah. Um, but her, you know, picking up my old tea towels and stuff is, uh, is ideal. So that's why I'm here. But I just, I'm, all I'm worried about is I think people kind of associate with the name Ricky Gervais, they associate a certain level of quality. You mm. know, your live stand-up DVDs, there's a level of quality, you've put a lot of work into them, you've mm. honed it. The TV work you've done, likewise. Mm. Should people expect the same from the radio show? Definitely not. No. Definitely not. Th those things that, you know, you, you sit down, well, you know, you sit down, we write them for a long time, write them for a year maybe, then film them, and we worry about everything. This is, uh, I really, I'm not even sure I'm talking into the mic at the moment. <laughs> I, I was actually doodling as you saw there. Yeah. I'm eating a sandwich as we speak. Yeah. You know, that, you know, if you, although we do like music, that is true. That's should, absolutely right. Should we play some great I'm records? Play a great record now. You two, City of Blinding Light. I, I'll tell you what, I love you two now. Yeah. I honestly hated them, sort of everything from boy up to about, I think, um, Beautiful Day when that came out. I thought, oh, that's all right. I listened to the album, listened to this album. I love them now, Steve. It's a turnaround, isn't it? Well, yeah, no, I mean, that's, it's, it's that kind of um, musical insight that I'm looking for throughout this show. Really. <laughs> I sound like Dr. Fox then, didn't I? Yeah. Just just find find some of your and wants and needs. Yeah. Dr. Fox. What's happened to him? Is he off air now? Because that's one of the reasons I put no effort into this radio show, because, uh, you know, uh, we, we go to the Golden Globes the same month, we do nothing at the Sony, and Dr. Fox actually said, that's because you're not very good. I like the fact that the uh, Dr. Fox criticisms really hit you quite hard. <laughs> You know, you really took I'm still hard. talking about it a year <laughs> yeah, later. Exactly. You know, you've got yeah. to let it go, Rick. <laughs> yeah. No, but then again, you know, he's a medical man, and <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, you got to, you got to believe him. You've got to trust his opinion. You know, uh, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I could have done without the rectal examination. I think he could have <laughs> just said, "You're not very good." <laughs> exactly. Try and enunciate. No, I know what the problem is. Or oh, let's have a look down here. <laughs> exactly. Carl, that to you had to um, out, go, go, go to one of those um well clinics, no, didn't you? No, I haven't gone. Why? Because I'm I'm not happy with it. What? I'm not happy with the whole. Well, it's just. Do people know what them places places are? We'll give you have a you, whole. Have you heard of them? Yeah, I've had one. Yeah, they they they, take, they check everything. Which you know, Suzanne, my girlfriend, was like, uh, you know, you're thirty odd now. <laughs> uh, when was the last time you went to the doctors? And I haven't been for ages because I don't. No, I never go. Doctors. I never go. And I think I'm, I'm honestly gonna die there. Well, I'm I just in agony. Think like, they can always find something. Jane made me go to one of those well things. Yeah, those yeah. boot things where they give it. It's yeah, cut under a quid, and they give you a. Com Complete head to toe, don't they? But, but, head, head to bottom <laughs> is what it is. The, uh, they do the old, uh, finger up the arse thing. Now, what is that testing for? Well, I like that he said it quietly, because he's on the radio. You know, you can't say arse. Yeah. Well, I say it quietly. <laughs> you say it quietly. Them. Yeah, yeah. Arse. Yeah, arse. That's what our mistake was, because we got, um, a complaint upheld, didn't we, for saying 
and I'm talking about a male chicken here, which is a cock, as you know. Yeah, okay. And we said that word, right? So if we'd have gone cock, <laughs> we'd have probably gotten away with it. You can get away with murder. If you just, yeah. If you just whisper it very So go on then, yeah, so. Go so, on then, So, yeah, yeah, no, I just, uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I'm not going because I'm not having that done. I don't understand what, what they're gonna find up there, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Your what, head? What, no, but why can't I just, I mean, it's the heart that I worry about the most. <laughs> Do you mean that in a, in a kind of romantic yeah. sense? No, no, I mean like, you know, if they you They'd have to have a long finger, wouldn't they, to check <laughs> that out. They go, is something wrong with your left ventricle? Yeah. Now, this thing about- this thing about the, uh, doctors, they- they hold your testicles and they make you cough. Yeah, they don't hold the testicles anymore, they just put it sort of like by the side of them. And what's that testing for? I- I- I don't know, I think it's something to do with, uh, if you've got something wrong with your- your diaphragm or something like that, you can't- you can't do it when they press there. I don't know, it, it shows you, them something. So you it's not- it's not doctors having a quick feel. Mm. But so you can- <laughs> <laughs> Well they- well that's good because- do you remember when Carl said he's gonna die of cancer? And I said, why? He said, I don't check me balls. I said, why? He said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> so they feel it for you, they- they feel them for you and you can- you can just relax, shut your eyes and think of England. But don't mess with them. What do you mean? You can do more damage messing about with them, just leave them. And there's <laughs> two anyway. You can afford to lose one. Yeah. I don't think that's the point. I think the, the point is it- it sort of s spreads, doesn't it? You know, it-, it you've gotta mm. check the- No, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, if- don't- don't do it, cos they spend a lot of money saying to people, you know, have a quick feel if you've got the time, what have you. <laughs> but I- I'm not- I- I'm, I don't worry about it. Leave it. Leave it alone. <laughs> why? why- out of interest, why do doctors stick fingers up your eyes? Check the prostate. Check the prostate? Yeah. Cos if it's swollen, it's- it could, yeah, it- it could, you know, lead to all sorts of problems. Again, they're not having a laugh, Carl. <laughs> they're not going, hang on, look at this bald little wank fella. But there's no uh, nice way- I'll feel his balls, stick a finger up his ass, and send him home. Three hundred <laughs> quid, please, <laughs> on you go. What about me art? It's fine. And they're all, la they're all laughing. Roger, Jeff, stand behind that two-way mirror. <laughs> yeah, 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 what's this? <laughs> oh, I'm uh, not going anyway. So really, you're not going because you don't want- No, I'm not happy with that. It doesn't even matter, it's not the fact he's a stranger. If it was someone who I knew, it'd be just as bad. <laughs> That'd be worse! Imagine that! At a dinner party. Oh God! Oh look, hello, hello, Roger and Selena. Um, do you mind, Roger? Do you mind? <laughs> Would you allow any of the celebrity doctors to do it though, Doctor Dre, uh, Doctor Fox, Fox, any of those? Doctor Who. I just don't understand in this day and age. <laughs> Would why? you allow Christopher Eccleston to stick his <laughs> big right, northern finger up? Got a song on anyway. <laughs> what? But, uh, Beanie Siegel. I love this track. Oh, it's very urban for you, Rick. Beanie Siegel. Feel it in the air. Beautiful track, isn't it? Well, it's wonderful. And I love your summer's day like this as well, Rick. It's the yeah. ideal choice. Well, yeah. that one. well, I'm a little bit worried that if there are any new listeners, very <laughs> unlikely, yeah. that, that, that they may, know, you know, be familiar with um, our work, but they might not know the, the wonderful little gem that we found just there. A little rough diamond in the, in the mud. Yeah. Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just working here, just working away as a little producer, a little sound man, a wasn't drone. he? Yeah. And he was, uh, and we gave him his opportunity, didn't we? Mm. It's like Cinderella, wasn't it? Yeah. And he, and he grasped that opportunity, didn't you, by the horns? And three years later, you're exactly where you started. <laughs> <laughs> so good work. Got Mondays off now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought maybe a, a, a useful way of introducing the mind of Carl Pilkington yeah. to um, our new you, you, audience. You use that term loosely. Yeah. When I say mind, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought- what, 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 Look at his face! Oh. There is a website, have you got the oh, website Oh, there's address? a website that we just found. Right, Carl, what is the address? If you are unfamiliar with what Carl looks like- Please um, log on to this now. Log on to this website and stay tuned, but listen, log on to the website because you'll see Carl's face, you'll see some of his pearls of wisdom. Yeah, now what's it? what's the address, Carl? Uh, freewebs.com. www. Yeah, freewebs.com. Freewebs.com. Com, yeah, S forward slash. Yeah. Uh, the dash K dash man. Forward slash. The K man. It's okay. complicated. It is, yeah. Do it again, say it again. But get a pencil all now, right. they've all got a pencil now. Freewebs.com. One word. Yeah. Slash the dash K dash man. Forward slash. Now when you say dash, is it, is it a dash or is it, is is it, it an middle, underscore? Is it, is it underscore, is it, is it in the middle of the word, or is it hover in the middle of the word, or is it at the, is it at the bottom? It's just- just a line and that. Yeah, I know, but is it an underscore or is it a dash? Try both. 
<laughs> he, he covered it down. Have a go. Wait, <laughs> that's the oh. sort of level we're talking about. Well, already you've got some insight into the mind of Carl. Yeah, you? absolutely. Yeah. But I thought what we should do is we could hijack. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that! Imagine Bill Gates! Yeah, or a teacher. <laughs> a teacher! In an exam! <laughs> Hot down both! <laughs> uh, multiple choice! Yeah! Yeah. Um, uh, right, okay. But anyway, yeah, if, if you're a reader of the uh, Weekend Guardian, you'll know there's this thing called the Q&A, which they, they give to uh, celebrities and thinkers and the like. Mm. And basically it's a series of questions they pose to each pe people each week, and it's the same questions, and it gives a little insight into people's minds, the way mm. they think. So what I'm particular, what thinker philosopher is in this week's? <laughs> um, it's the lead singer of Feeder. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you're in good company, Carl. Um, no, I like Feeder. No, fine. I love Feeder. So, Carl, I'm just going to fire a couple of these questions at you. We'll maybe drop them in throughout the course of the show, just to try and get a sense of who you are. Um, mm. So, here's the first up, first question. All right, you got your thinking head on? Go on. <laughs> you wurzel. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Uh, what, for me, or...? Already <laughs> No, Ronnie it. Corbett. <laughs> no, no, but, but what do you mean, like, what will make me happy, or yeah. for everyone to be happy? No, what would make you happy? Maybe that is that. Maybe that's the answer. Y your idea of perfect happiness is to everyone being happy. I don't know. What's your? What would make you totally? Unlikely. Yeah, but I imagine it's a twenty-four-hour monkey channel <laughs> on like the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, go on. A What's never your idea ending of popsicle. Go on, go on. Uh, I, d I, d I don't think I've had it yet where I'm like really, really happy with anything. So, Carl, I've never seen you really happy. No. No, but um, when have you been at your happiest? Probably, I like I like sort of fish fingers, potato cakes, and beans for a for tea. Yeah, and you're, not, you're not. You're not. Yeah. Right. Well, let's move on. We'll come back to that one. Let's <laughs> you know, I don't think you're aiming high enough for. Uh, well, what would your answer be for that? When are you happy? What would make you happy? Um, I I wouldn't have the. I'd have fish fingers, but I probably <laughs> wouldn't have the potato cakes. Yeah. I'd have fish fingers and beans. See, I'm some... not a huge fan of the beans. Really? So yeah. your idea of. Um, perfect happiness is probably just fish fingers, is <laughs> just it? Just the fish fingers. Okay, good. Alright, second question. What is your greatest fear, Carl? Mm. Going to the doctors. Okay. So, more, so, so presumably, uh, ill health and mortality. Uh, That's how you no, do it, you see. No, I don't. Yeah, just, I don't <laughs> any particular doctor? <laughs> I don't want to live forever either. No. I just want no. to get to I just want to get to about 80, 83, 84. <laughs> Specific! <laughs> Specific. Yeah. Okay. Which living person do you most admire? Uh. Which person throughout any time in history do you most admire? Winston Churchill's pretty good. You like yeah, him? Yeah, it's very good. He's Why? Right. Good answer. Because if it weren't for him, we'd be talking German. I'm not that good at that. So. <laughs> That's, he's not that good at that. I love the fact that even if the Nazis had won, right, in 1945, and we'd be now speaking German, he still wouldn't be that good at it. Although he's not good at English, so I suppose, yeah, I suppose he's, <laughs> I suppose that's true, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, here's one, here's the final one for now. Do you believe in capital punishment? Uh, That's not it in Dr. Fox over the head with a stick. <laughs> depends, depends what for, do not it? Go on. Oh, if it's something bad. And, uh, well, I assume it would be. <coughs> they don't. They don't. They don't kill what, people what, now what, for uh, uh, parking what, illegally. But, but what sort of what sort of thing are you talking about? What sort of punishment? Capital punishment. Yeah, I know. But what is that? What what, what are you talking about? Well, guillotine hanging. Uh, uh, hanging's a bit bad. Yeah. Uh, can be fatal, can't it? What do you mean hanging's a bit bad? It's just. It's not, all bad. Why? Mm, why? Why should the state kill someone? Because prisons are getting a bit busy, aren't they? Brilliant. Okay. I just, what's what's the point in keeping them, you know people people around? Well, what's the point in killing them? Just because it's like right, that's that Don. Who's who's next? <laughs> you know what, I mean? <laughs> what can you do with someone if they're mental? <laughs> Employ them on a radio show. Uh, yeah. Play a record, right. Carl. Next question. Play a record. Okay. We'll come back to the questions. Of uh, what do you want? What have you got in here? Rick, I know you're a massive fan of the Thorns. Yeah. Well, maybe you're less familiar with the uh, different elements of the Thorns mm. solo work. No. Here's no. A track from Matthew Sweet. Oh yeah.
XFM 104.9, Matthew Sweet, and a song called In My Time, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. That was great, that. Yeah, just asking Carl some of these uh, Q&A questions. This might be my idea of prep happiness, being in a room with Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just what I watch him, I just watch him look around, when you're talking, uh, he looks at you, and it's like, you know when the owners say, it's like the cat can understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's, it's like, he's on the edge look. of that. He's yeah. on the edge of that. Oh, you think he can, and I know he understands the words, but I don't think he understands the full impact. He never, whenever you say something to him, it might be some, you know, a revelation or some, uh, he always picks up on the wrong side, you go, well, that's not the important bit. Do you know what I mean? He always goes- It's a bit like having a 14 year old French exchange student. <laughs> you know, their, yeah. their English is not amazing, they roughly yeah. understand you, but they're trying to piece together what you're saying. Exactly. But it, it's great. You see, um, the thing about Carl is, and d don't take this the wrong way, I like him st because he's stupid, mm. in a way. <laughs> no, I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? But even though I think he is considered uh, stupid, some of the things he says, I think borders on the, I don't know what the PC term is, the retarded. <laughs> do you know what I mean, yeah. Carl? Anything in particular you're thinking of, though, Rick, when you think of the, Well, uh... um, he was talking to me the other day, because I'm, I'm trying to write a show called Science, and he's sort of, uh, going to help me out with some of the research, and I want to, I want him to do something on the DVD for it, right? And, uh... He, um, was talking about it, and uh, he was talking about, um, he says that uh, in the future, they reckon we'll be able to, soon, he said, they'll be able to take us into space, and it's going to cost us £150,000. He said, what's the point? There's nothing up there. He said, when they went up there, right, he said, when Louis Armstrong went, <laughs> in 1966, <laughs> right, he said, it was nothing there. So there was him, a fella called Buzz, there was one and third bloke that didn't even get out of the spaceship. He said he went all that way, he didn't get out to stretch his legs. How good can it be? Forget it. That's him summing up yeah. space don't exploration. Don't, don't, don't you agree with that? What, what's the point in going up there? Because you're Are we talking about the finger in the arse again here? Or it's space. Oh, so what, what is the point in going Because you're to expanding, you know, human endeavour, aren't you, and the human uh, understanding of the world and the universe. It's like, what else are we going to do as a civilization, as a, as a people, if we're not constantly searching and, you know, and, and reaching out into the far distance? But there's nothing there, though. I know some people you grew up with that haven't left their street, but that, that's not everyone. But what is it? What do you mean there's nothing there? That what, what, what has got to be there for it to be a worthwhile life? Just something. What, I mean, like, to be honest, what I, would you I, be I happy with finding out on the moon? Not video. Just, just... Just something. I don't think they looked hard enough anyway when they got there, because they seemed to get out, have a bit of a dance about, and then they came straight back. And I sort of think, you know, did they look properly? It's not a day trip, is it? But what, what I mean is- But they is, took that car out there, didn't they, and drove around a bit? Yeah, but only a little bit. What I mean is, say if an alien landed in, in Africa, there's not much there, so they'd go, Phew. What yeah, do you mean there's not much there? Well, it's a bit barren, isn't it? Well, Africa, just in general. Well, anywhere the, the, like that, the, the desert or whatever, what I'm saying is, it's got, have a good look round. Probably the, uh, where all life came from, and uh, probably half a million yeah, species of I, animals I lived there. buildings and that, and stuff. Oh, just, buildings. Well, just stuff. Yeah. I mean, did they look properly? Or did they just land, get out, go, oh, a bit dusty or whatever, right, let's go back. I just think it's a bit pointless. Especially sure. when we haven't done everything there is to do here. Go I mean, on. Well, I, I don't know, but I'm sure there is stuff <laughs> that needs sorting out. Well, there's, I know the place that there's, there's no medical man has been <laughs> in this room. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's, there's definitely an unexplored uh, cavern <laughs> sitting right in right. front. All right, Steve, would you go to the moon if someone said there's a space? He doesn't march at a concert because he's scared his glasses to fall off. Of course he wouldn't go to the moon. That They'd spin him round in training, his glasses would come off, and that'll be it. He'd, yeah. he'd feel sick. My worry is I'm not sure I'd get- I'd have to- because I- would I be able to wear him under the helmet? <laughs> Imagine him! Like, I went- I went paintballing once, and I had to wear the glasses <laughs> underneath the mask, and of course it was a bit hot weather, it was awful- all, it was steamed up in there. It's terrible, I couldn't see anything, I got shot straight away, I was out of the game, it was pointless. <laughs> you know, it cost me like eight quid. Yeah. You don't have to be that fit anyway, do you? You're only sort of sat there. Well, not, uh, well, yeah, but what, what are you talking about? Think of G-force alone and weightlessness. Of course you've got to be, what? Yeah. I what? think when you said think of G-force, he thought of G-4. <laughs> the, uh, follow-up <laughs> winners in Pop Idol. I could see it as his, as his eyes glazed over. A couple uh, more quick questions for you, Carl, just to try and get inside your mind. Um, what do you, uh, what is your greatest regret? Uh, probably... I didn't do that well at school, did I? So I'm, I'm trying to like learn stuff now. Yeah, but not, not mentally. But, you know. He reckons he's learned more in the last three months than he ever has in the rest of his life. Reading a couple of science books, I gave him. 
Well, that's impressive. We'll test you on that later on. Yeah. What keeps you awake at night? Um, well, I live in sort of central London, don't I? So it's- <laughs> Brilliant. Traffic and that. I yeah. think they were yeah. thinking more- so More of what, what, what fears that. have you got? What worries? Do you, do you, do you, do you ponder the expansion of the universe? Do you worry about it? There's no point, there's no point, is there? Cause there's nothing I can do about it. So what, with you, it's the, the, what, the, the little Chinese fellow across the road? Just, just, just stuff that, that I've got to sort out, you know, any bills or anything. I don't worry about the world ending or anything. What, what's the point in that? <laughs> it's true, that I is true. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I always think that people with more sort of intelligence have the world on their shoulders because they, they're worrying about stuff that's miles away. Whereas I'm like, you know, I'm happy if if the sun's out. It's like, oh, it's a nice day. Yeah. yeah. I don't what worry about wars and stuff going on because there's nothing I can do. What would you do if there was a, a war that, uh, that maybe there was? What here? Yeah. Go on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record, Carl. <laughs> The Who? I mean, that's that's got to be one of the best rock tracks ever, hasn't it? Oh, there's no oh, argument. Do I sound like Dr. Fox again? A little bit. Okay, that's a good, good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to get a Sony award this oh. year. Carl, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm alright, yeah. Yeah? It's good to be back, isn't it? We're doing Rockbusters in a bit, what? Have we, have we got Rockbusters? Well. Hallelujah! <laughs> I'll tell you this, new listeners. <laughs> <laughs> new listeners. New won't believe their luck when they hear Rockbusters. We've got Rockbusters. Have we got, well, dare I say it, have we got monkey news, Carl? Uh, well, I've been away, haven't I? So, I've sort of got a few things that I've, I've read about roughly, yeah. but I don't know the full ins and outs. You're joking, because usually you do your research quite well, don't you, when you get uh, it off Ann and over and read the top line. Uh, so what are you saying, though? Are you saying that there's, it's kind of monkey news? Well, we'll we might have time to do something later. Well, we can, we've got to have him. I love it when he teases us with his monkey news. <laughs> we've we've yeah. had emails about that that website address. Oh yeah. Uh, it was it was a, a, a what's her name a underscore. an underscore. Okay, an underscore, so, so give it out one more time. They go to this to find out about Carl Pilkington. Someone's putting a lot of effort. It's a really good website. There's some great pictures of Carl. It's well, they're not great. They're just uh, <laughs> freewebs. dot com slash the underscore k underscore man slash Okay, forward slashes all the all the way. Yeah, except yeah. the underscores. Except the underscores. Yeah, this is interminable. Isn't it interminable <laughs> giving out email addresses? I know. Yeah, Rub it. it's so boring. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh dear. Is, mm -hmm. it, is he enjoying the show? Uh, it just says um, I love spending two hours on a Saturday listening about fingers up asses, doctors squeezing testicles, and making you cough. Uh, have you got any news on the airy Chinese kid? <laughs> so. <laughs> well, when when you say it like that, some of the stuff we cover does sound a little bit of uh, you know drivel. Well, sometimes yeah. Carl was worried. Carl was worried about swearing because we were talking about finger at arse and that. He's generally worried, and, and I, I don't have a problem with swearing. Although I understand why you can't say certain words on radio; it might be offensive. People aren't listening. I mean, you know, the f word, the c word, and all those. But when they bleep it out, when they bleep it out in a record, they bleep out the vowel. Mm. So in the f word, they bleep out the u. So it goes beep, right? What? What? So they go. It's not offensive. I didn't hear the vowel. Presumably, yeah. So if you change the vowel, it's not. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, uh, in the C word, could I say, um, could I talk about the, the philosopher Immanuel Kant? Well, you can talk about Immanuel Kant because he's one of the great thinkers of, of all time. So Kant is not an offensive word because the vowel is right. different, okay. is it? Leave it, leave it then. <laughs> no, do you know what I mean though? But I, I don't no, see but... how it can be offensive. You can't. It it's can't be. Really. He's, he's a thinker. He's a philosopher. His name is. His okay. name is Kant. That is his actual oh, name. I, mean, yeah. I think it, it comes from a long line of. Kant's from what I can. Oh, he hasn't changed his name. I think his father, his grandfather. Oh, yeah, they're yeah, all they've got German people. Oh, well, Germany is, I assume, full of Kant's. Well, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. What? Well, so, what? What else? Was so he can change the vowel. So could I say? Um, could I say? Uh, uh, Probably not. Oh, what if I change two words? What if I said cump? C U M P. Now that's not offensive at all, is it? That can't be offensive. So I could say you fucking cump. Right. Yeah. Okay. What? Well, well, I, I, I need a schnit. Right. <laughs> that would be fun. Wonka, Willy right. Wonka. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Willy Wonka. Yeah, w yeah. Got, although yeah. Willy is Willy offensive because you say Willy. It's tricky. Willy, it's tricky. Willy Wonka, and his and uh, Willy Wonka and his falcon right. cumps. Yeah, that would be fine. That would be absolutely it? fine. Is that all right yeah. then, Carl? Are there any other questions or anything, Steve? <laughs> well, uh, I, I thought so much a question, but it's something that I think might be of interest to you, Carl. Um, I was reading about this in the paper, and I know how fascinated you are by people of the Japanese persuasion. 
Um, two elderly men found on a remote island are believed to be Japanese soldiers in hiding since 1945, desperate to go home. Diplomats from Tokyo are investigating the claims of these men, who are 87 and 83. <laughs> what? What? What are you thinking there? Well, no, go on. I know what you're thinking. Go on. Say what you're thinking. I'll be that old, though. Why? Why? Say why. I don't, I don't want to. Just leave it. Leave, Carl's leave got on. a theory. Well, I, I, th I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think that this is fine. It's, it's, I, I'd say that Carl's views don't reflect the views of XFM, mm. right? Carl's got a theory that Oriental people don't age well. Sure. Uh, let, uh, let Carl yeah, But, but that annoys that me the way, yeah, but I think what? people will probably agree with me, but for some reason, <laughs> what, the first time I said that, I wasn't even worried about it, but now, because of reaction of people, <laughs> what? It, I don't understand, I don't know why I can't say that. What's Big your theory? Explain your theory, in a nutshell. Just that you don't see a, 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 a you know, a sort of a 33-year-old Chinese person. <laughs> <or either. laughs> No, but, but at the same time- you What do you mean you don't yeah, see a 33 year I'm not, I'm not having a go, person. at the same time, you don't see that many fat ones either. So, in a way, that's- that's good news. Nobody would be upset about that. But what do you mean- But you your news isn't bad news, because it's not true. But wait, stop, stop, stop. What do you mean you don't see a 33 year old Chinese person? I don't understand. What do you mean you don't see them? What do you see then? Sort of, you know, young- young ones. Uh, and then, like, you don't see that middle ground. <laughs> This theory's based on! So you see old ones and you see, er, and you see yeah. young ones, but you never see any in between? Yeah. What uh, do you mean? So what's the oldest, what's, okay, what's the oldest Chinese person you've seen before the age of 33? How old do you think? About 22. 22, so you've seen lots of 22 year olds, so you've seen a range from babies to 22 year old twi uh, Chinese people. Yeah. That's fact, okay? And then what gap do you miss out? What, 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 when, when do they pop back up on the radar for you? What age has a Chinese person got to be to be older than that? Well, Forty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> They're always so specific. What, what do you mean? When you say they don't age well, what do you mean they don't age well? You think that you mean that middle-aged ones look old? Because you think at twenty-three, when they're twenty-three, they're like, happy birthday to you, <sighs> and they look up and oh, jeez, it's fifty-two. What? What do you mean? No, I just, I just mean they don't age that well. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know what it is in them, but they just don't. You, all right then. Here's, here's a question. You tell me of a Chinese person on the telly who's about 32. Tell me of a Chinese person on the telly first. <laughs> G give us the great gamut of uh, Chinese talent um, currently on British TV, right? And I'll and our, our pick and choose. Go on then. Bruce Lee. Hmm. How long has he been dead, Bruce Lee? Seventies, wasn't it? And not, not not really on the telly much, was he? Okay. What, what age was he when he died? 33, I think. Well, I wouldn't have never guessed that. Well, what do you think? How old do you think he was? Probably about forty-two. What, you know Bert Kwok? Yeah, he's old. Yeah. Do you remember the Pink Panther films? No. Okay. He wasn't that old in them because it was sixty seventies. But how old did he look though? If 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 he walked in and someone said, "You never guess how old he is," what would you have said? <laughs> right then. There's my point then. There's my point. I have to say. I've been listening to you two talk, and I like the idea that there's people who've been waiting 18 months for some of this. <laughs> <laughs> for the- for the Kant discussion, the, uh, Orientals. I- I- do you know what I think? I think, um, uh, Kant, uh, as a philosopher, um, is very popular in Essex. Because I hear him saying his name all the time, oh, whenever I go now. through- What? They're all shouting this and that. They're all shouting- Kings of Leon and XFM. Carl. Of HD Merchant Carl Pilkington. Oh. Carl! Dead air! Talk! No, I'm just- I'm just looking at it now. Yeah, it's but someone... that's no good on radio! You can't just look at something! You gotta talk! Is he even more backward than I remember? I don't know! It's just that like someone's emailed in. Yeah, so He's... you gotta tell yeah, the, the listeners that! Now. I'm telling them now, I'm doing it! Someone's emailed in from Tokyo, mm. saying that he's getting married in a few months. Mm. To a Japanese woman, she's 27. <laughs> Just what an hour long I've got, so she starts looking old. <laughs> well, how long do you reckon, according to your theory? Mm, about. Probably about four years. <laughs> about four years and that. So. <laughs> what would you advise him? To get out now or? Well, have some good sort of wedding pictures done and that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! <laughs>
<laughs> it's not true. The fear is not true. Well, we'll see. We'll see, won't we? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Great. In four years' time, he's going to send a picture going. Oh, you're right, Carl. Look, she looks like a prune. What? He's going to suddenly start saying his girl. It's not true. It's not going to happen. It's that thing though, isn't it, of looking at her mum. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in that, isn't there? That you shouldn't shouldn't really meet up with your girlfriend's sort of parents and that. Sure. Because no. you just sort of get a little taste of what's to come mm. and what have you. Then what's to come with yours? Uh, it's a good job I didn't meet her early on. <laughs> no, no. You're gonna be in such trouble! No, they don't listen. It's alright. Really? Well, it's Suzanne right. does, doesn't she? She'll probably be out. Really? But she, she knows. She's got some sense. <laughs> yeah, when you get back! Yeah. You went on holiday with them, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I've been, we've been on since then, haven't we? I don't think so. Yeah, I went on holiday, holiday last week, been away, but that was just me and Suzanne. Talk oh, about that it? later. Yeah, okay. Oh, that, that, that's coming up. Plus, yeah. of course, Rockbusters, the return of Rockbusters. Let's start let's Rockbusters. Do Rockbusters. Let's now. do Rockbusters. Let's get it rolling, because we've got, I have got some amazing prizes. I went to the Americas and I brought back gifts. Not your tobacco and your potatoes, but brilliant prizes. Now, quite seriously, these are not the usual tat. You will win some tat. For Rockbusters, okay? We've got DVDs, uh, CDs, uh, uh, things like that, right? But the winner of Rockbusters today will go through to a chance to win the prizes in the in week six. We're only here for six weeks, by the way. This is our first of six shows. Thank God for that. Yeah. And, um, I got, I went to, I went to do The Simpsons, uh, last weekend, and I've got, um, a drawing here, an original drawing of Homer by Matt Groening. See that? Look at that. Uh, as Homer there, your pal Matt Groening, May the 18th, 2005, and Homer's saying, I love Carl because he's stupid like me. And that's going to be framed, original drawing. Uh, that is worth, a, I think, a lot, but I promised Matt Groening that it will not go on eBay. So please, I hope it goes to a fan. Um, I've also got a rare Spinal Tap poster, uh, met with Christopher Guest, and he signed that, Nigel Tufnell. Um, so... Uh, fans of Spinal Tap and The Simpsons, possibly the two greatest things ever, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, also, uh, my friend Rob, who did flannels with me, has drawn us three as flannels, as Steve there, a little gog lanker, as me there, a little bloke dumplant, and little Carl Pilgerton, Pink Floyd numbskrunt. And these are all, these are gonna be framed. So some very nice prizes. And, I got a little surprise for you. Obviously I met Homer. Um, Press that little button there. Listen to this. Hi, this is Homer Simpson. I like Carl and his perfectly round bald head. If you put three holes in it, it looks just like my bowling ball. Brilliant. Actual proof that you've uh, met the people themselves, that the prizes are bona fide and genuine. But don't enter this week's Rockbusters thinking you're going to win those prizes automatically. No. This week you just win the usual tat. What is the tat, but, Steve? Well, we'll talk about that shortly. Okay. But you go it's forward for. to the big, uh, the big showdown, the big final competition in week six, where you get the chance to win those. All quite one person wins prizes. all those beautiful so just uh, everyone collectible goes in the draw. prizes. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, the winners of each week go into the draw. What is Rockbusters, Carl? Uh, we've wet their appetite. I think play a record and maybe some wonderful adverts and then come back with Rockbusters. It's that kind of teasing that has made this a potential award-winning show. Bronze, I think, next yeah. year. Can we just swap that round and do ads and the song? Uh, whatever way suits you, mate. Go on. XFM. <laughs> XFM, 104.9, Magic Numbers, <laughs> Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, I'm a little bit worried. I've just got to warn the listener, if we suddenly just go off air, right, it's because <laughs> champagne is pouring down a hole where there's loads of wires into the desk. Because Steve... Yeah. Getting ready to open this champagne, right, just took that wire thing off, just put it there, of course because it's warm, it just it exploded everywhere. Yeah, I should explain now. I didn't bring in champagne to toast our <laughs> return to the radio. I mean, I'm not an idiot, but um, actually, uh, from Focus PR, Ashley has rather nicely sent us some uh, Lindauer sparkling wine, and I'm just trying some, and uh, it's really quite refreshing on this uh, summer's day. So, if you're perhaps working for some kind of PR agency, you know, or any kind of company, and you want to send us stuff which you want us to shamelessly promote on air, then feel free to do that. Uh, so you're just, just looking for free stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, electrical goods. Um, oh, okay, it's so not just like champagne definitely stuff. Definitely not. Because I was going to say, if other champagne companies, what's that champagne company called that they sent us free? Uh, Lindauer sparkling wine, which I imagine is available now. <laughs> yeah, so other champagne companies feeling jealous could send you some and you'd, you'd mention it. I don't want to exclude anyone from this. You know, anyone <laughs> is welcome to send anything in. Um, Brilliant. And, and as I say, I'm particularly interested in, in um, sort of designer goods. Okay. Um, you know, the Apple Mac people, they're welcome to sure. send anything in. Now, 
What's annoying about that champagne opening like that is that, as you know, I've brought my camera in, um, uh, and I wanted to film you opening that onto Carl's head, got the cork. Rick, I got another bottle. Have you ever- I don't want you to miss out on oh, an yeah. like that. That's a bit of a waste of champagne and opening two bottles. But Carl, would you mind, cause I, cause that would have made a cracking noise against your head, that cork going off. And uh, cause it's such a lovely bald little sort of dome. Mm. Yeah. Um, put your head, we'll put your head right down, yeah? yeah? It'll open it, we'll see what the cork does and I'll film it oh. for, uh, like mm. a website or something. Maybe we'll make yeah. that the finale of today's show. That'll be great. Yeah. Okay. Um, sponsored well, by Linda yeah. Sparkling Water. Oh yeah! The sound, the sound of a <laughs> cracking cork against Carl's skull. Sponsored by Lindau. <laughs> sponsored by Lindau. Available now. <laughs> great. Right, we're doing rock bust this then. Oh, okay, <laughs> now you, you should explain briefly what the concept is, Carl, because um, there might be a few new listeners. <laughs> Blockb <laughs> it's blockbusters. Right, go on then. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not blockbusters. No, because they were real clues, that weren't would, they? Yeah, that was actually He easy. says they're a cryptic clue. It's not cryptic. Yeah. It's well, what am I- it's like, what am I thinking? This competition is like, what number am I thinking of? Rick, just calm down for a second. Let me explain basically what the concept is. You'll remember some of the greats from the past. Yeah. And um, basically, uh, you give some vague clue, is that right, Carl? And from that, we're cryptic. supposed to deduct yeah. which band or artist you're thinking of. So, yeah. for instance, there was a Well, there was one, the West Indian fella spinning a fish round his head, and that was Detroit Spinners. The Trout Spinners. Yeah, Detroit, 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 Detroit Spinners. Spinners. Yeah. yeah. There was also, what happens if you fall over into a puddle in Texas, what? Wet Knee Houston, Wet yeah, Knee Yeah, that, that is Houston. the level. Of Carl's That's what you're clues. working with. The, but could I just say, there's no irony in this. Carl doesn't think this is quirky or kitsch or uh, ironic. This he thinks these are th he thinks these could go on the Guardian crossword. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. This so, is the best I've even come up with. Yeah. Right. So, so there's there's three of them. Yeah. Right. I give you the cryptic clue. Yeah, not and to cryptic. help you along, well, it is. Yeah, uh, and really. I give you some initials of the band or the artist or whatever to help you along as well. Yeah. Uh, three no, of them. Is, this is on the text only, we don't want emails on this one, just It's eight. the one that gets the highest or the first one to get three. The first email with three or the first one that is the, the highest. So if, if no one gets the third one, which I wouldn't blame you for, uh, so if there's like 30 people that get two, it's the first email that comes in that we pick and that uh, they win a, uh, handful of tat, which, would you like to go through? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll search out the tat in a second, I'm not sure where it is, yeah. Good stuff. There's some DVDs and stuff in there, it's not bad, yeah, but uh, it means you go forward to the grand final in six weeks time when you're playing for all that amazing stuff Ricky's got. We've got the signed, uh, genuine exclusive drawing of Homer Simpson done by Matt Groening, um, featuring references to Carl. We've got the signed mm. spinal tat poster. So this is big yeah. stuff you can't get anywhere else. No, it's a rare, it's a rare um, American poster signed by and Nigel Tuffman. It's such a shame that your only chance of winning it is with this inane quiz. Uh, absolutely, it's not. It's not down to skill or anything. Uh, it's it's just such a shame that. Let's that, just do it then. Go on then. Uh, right, the first one. Go on. Uh, what you got to remember is it's a band or an artist that so that X of M play as well. Right, right then. So uh, the first one. Oh uh, yeah, because X of M play the Detroit Spinners <laughs> and Whitney Houston all the time, <laughs> yeah. don't they? All right, these three. Okay. Away, but these are these are X of M bands. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you got, if you got like a, a ball. Oh Jesus! <laughs> I just, just I know, and the, you don't think about the cryptic clue is that every syllable counts. <laughs> he says it's different every time he <laughs> says it. it There'll be somewhere different. <laughs> look, he's, look, go on then. Go. Right. So if you get a bulb, right? A bulb? What? A bulb. A bulb. What's a bulb? What's a bulb? Like a. I like bulb. I like bulb. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I like bulb. So okay, you get yeah. a bulb. You get a bulb. Yeah. 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 <laughs> go on. <laughs> 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 he's gone. Right. Go on. You get a bulb. Right? Oh, yeah, a bulb. Yeah. Have you got something in your throat? What are you doing? Are you need a gobstopper. What are you doing? <laughs> we'll play a song then. No, come on. <laughs> get, get the clue out. For goodness Go sake. On. So the, the cryptic clue is: so if you get a bulb, right? So <laughs> <laughs> that's the beginning. Okay, great. Right, oh. right. If you get a saw, then right. If you get a bulb, like, go on. And you look after it, right? You look after that bulb, mm. and you teach it stuff. Jesus Christ. What are you doing there? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is extraordinary. This That's is extraordinary. Amazing. Imagine that written down in the He's telegraph. He's 18 months to get <laughs> but right. Imagine it. That's, that, that's not a clue. That's an essay. I don't know what it is. It's a conversation with yourself. I don't know if he means a light bulb, a bulb like you plant in the garden. What kind of bulb does he mean? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Well, you get a bulb. Well, um, well, remember that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Okay, it doesn't no, matter. It, it does, but I can't say too much. <laughs> Right, so listen, let me just do it again. You get a bulb, right? Yeah. When it's young, you look after that bulb, yeah. you teach it stuff and what have you. What have you done there? What, what's going on? <laughs> Brilliant! Oh, so the initials of the band. R, right? R. R for rabbit, right? So what's the band there? Second right. one. Jesus. Uh, P 
people have a problem doing this when they get home from, from like, an, a night out drinking? Right? What What's the problem they've got? Right? The the initial there, uh, K. What's the band? Right? People get in from having a night out, they'll have a problem doing this. What is it? What's, what's, what's the problem? Okay. And, and clue right. number three? I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Right? That's, that's C. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. You had a vision of that Chinese flu, yeah, and, and that's the, band the letter C. Yeah, and the C. Right, so three bands there, three uh, cryptic clues. Not really. Text in, 83XFM, just, just send the three, uh, three band names, that'll do, won't it? Can that'll they do fine. a website as well? If they want, they can email in. Well, tell them what it is. Yeah, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Just right. send it in there. Give them again uh, quickly then, Carl. Right then, so get a bulb when it's young and that. Look Brilliant. after it. Brilliant. Different. Totally after different. After it. Teach it stuff. Yeah. And all that. Okay. Ah. Ah. What's the band? Right. Yeah. Second one. Mm. People have a problem doing this when they get home late at night. You mm. know, they've been out drinking and that. They get home. What, yeah. what problem are they going to yeah. have? Mm. K is the initial. Mm. Third, third one. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. What do I mean? Mm. Brilliant. C. C is the initial. Play record. I mean, it's, it's abomination. Right, go. Embrace, glorious day on XFM 104.9. Rick, there may be listeners um, tuning in thinking they've got something better to do, for instance, switching off the radio and just staring blankly at the wall for uh, the next <laughs> half an hour, but yeah. no, because what they're going to miss is our grand finale oh, yeah. to this, which is of course um, sponsored by sponsored by Lindauer's, the uh, sparkling w sparkling wine solution to a hot summer's day, Yeah, uh, that we're going to be firing a cork. Did you just make that? Yeah. It's pretty, pretty good. Things, yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> They're going to be firing a cork, uh, at Carl's head, uh, just for the sound. Just I, I just moment. think it's oh. sound. Huh? It's not happening. Yes, what it is. You said, no, no, we've said it is now. We've promised it to the listeners. Yeah, come on. I'm not happy with it. Why? Because the pain? Well, I, I've never had it done, so I don't know how painful it is. Well, all well, the reason to do it, then. Yeah, we've got to try it out, haven't you? It's, you're perfectly, it's, 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 it's like oh. a little, like a little cowbell, yes. a wood block, it's like, I just, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. I'm hoping for pop. Oh. But, uh, and I'm gonna film it for my website. Brilliant. So go to that this week, um, uh, rickygervais.com, and yeah. see Carl Pilkerson getting hit. Uh, a high-powered cork coming out of, um, a uh, uh, Lindauer Sparkling Wine. <laughs> Lindauer Sparkling Wine. And of course, if you uh, want to send us anything in, and um, perhaps next week, that you feel we could, um, actually, that, maybe that'd that's That'd be it. great. That's you the, that's the, the this is like interactive, call. because it's a lot amazing. of people plan the show, like Dr. Fox plans his show, we sort of come up, we riff on the, so we, that's a great idea. Send stuff in that we could harm Carl with. Yeah, we could Harm Carl. Harm Carl. We yeah. do a, do a jingle, harm Carl. I've and always wanted one on. of those George Foreman grills. I've oh, always wanted one of them. I know, but that's too, uh, the, too could, much, isn't it? We could, what if we just pressed his head inside it? But, we'd, but, have to, we'd have to put it on. Put, just, put it on. See, yeah. see, yeah. Just squeeze oh, his head inside it. I've got to do that thing with a tea towel one day. You know that thing I did with a tea towel? You put a tea towel around his head, right, tie it, I put a wooden spoon in, and you only have to turn it like a couple of inches, and it, it kills you, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it really is, yeah. yeah. So we'll be firing a cork at Carl's head, I'll be filming it for the website. So that's coming up in about, uh, about ten to three. Look forward to that. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? I'm loving this. This is my. Oh, I just. Uh, oh, just being in a room with him. I just can't. I want to squeeze his head all well, the time. I'll tell you, if you're a fan of um, imbeciles and idiots, yeah, you're missing out if you're not watching Celebrity Love Island. Oh, I, I watched about well, thirty seconds of it, and I hate them. Just, uh, just desperate uh, idiots and slappers. <laughs> I, I actually. Angers me. I, I I switched on Celebrity Love Island. The first thing I thought is, where's a tsunami when you need one? <laughs> but, um, but, but seriously, but there's a guy on there. There's a guy on there. Paul, De I think his name's Paul Denan, ex of um, Hollyoaks, and he's an absolute joy because, like Carl, he's an absolute simpleton. Oh really? And it was fantastic. And he was on one week, and he was talking about how he fancied lazy Lady Isabella Harvey. Oh yeah. And he said to her, he said um thing is, right, I really fancy her because, um, she don't like reading books and I don't like reading books. <laughs> I've got something going But I love the idea that, they, that he's attracted to someone for something they don't do. <laughs> I know, you know, yeah. I've never killed a kid. What, she's never killed a kid. What, We're gonna get what about sleep around? That yeah. would be a good thing to be attracted to someone for. Oh, just honestly, and Big Brother's the same. Is it? Just a load of ropey old cats. Um, uh, yeah, I know, it's just like a horrible, cellulited, wobbly, rice arsed fat titted tarts oh. and idiots and show offs and are there they're all they uh, they they all disgust me for a different reason. Mm. I don't know which one to hate <laughs> most, most and why. They 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 
all give me a couple of reasons to hate That's them. That's what the nomination should be. Yeah. You know, nominate who do you hate the most. Cause I- Absolutely. I, you know, I thought I was gonna switch on and find that actually, you know, people like Abby Titmus and Rebecca Luz had been misrepresented by the press. Oh, well, the one that wanked off a pig in public? Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> go on. Yeah. Yeah. Was that- did you say wonked off? I said, said one top a, a pog. Yeah. One top a pog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> great, isn't it? But I mean, so, so, so uh, it's uh, amazing, Rebecca. I mean, let, let's, uh, don't even get me started on Abby Titmus. Don't well, even get me. There's, there, 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 don't. Uh, I like the idea of her uh, of her parents perhaps going to you know some kind of um, you know someone's birthday or whatever, meeting some old friends who've probably oh, yeah. been away living in another country. Yeah. How's young Abby? Is she still a nurse saving lives? No, she gets her tits out for a living now. Oh, you're funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rebecca, well, Rebecca Lou's um, by her own admission. I don't know if it's true, but by, but she said she. Sleeps to the married man, then sold a story to Edwards, then wank wonked off a pog, <laughs> yeah. right? That's a hell of a CV, That's, isn't it? I'm looking forward to that. That is amazing. Movie. I bet her nan's very, very proud of her. Yeah. Uh, are they all- are they- are, oh, God, don't- just forget it. Don't get me started. I'll be watching every night for the oh, next yeah, ten yeah, weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can't not. Is it? it you, my adrenaline rushes. I hate, and you, you get. Oh god! I just tune in to see. You, uh, it's almost like you tune in to see which one gets hurt. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Emotionally scarred. But maybe one of them will come through. What we'll find out. We're always going to be exactly. We're going to find out that one of them was like re had a really, really bad childhood, and we feel sorry for her for yeah. a little. You know, like the Jade Goody syndrome or something. And yeah. oh god! Yeah. Then they release an exercise video. Oh, Carl. We gotta get in you in on this. Oh, imagine Carl in Big Brother. That would be a joy. That would be amazing. But you turned on and you hated it, didn't you? Yeah, I gave it, like, three minutes and it's gone. There's yeah. always something better on, though. You annoy me that you watch it. You know yeah. about it now, but you I watch know. it. I know, I, I, I know, yeah. I know. There's always something I, better I, I really did not watch any of Celebrity Lover. That was just too awful. I think celebrities are worse than, uh, um, general public, though, to me, because if they're so desperate, they want nine little bites of the cherry, and it's, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Or at least these people, you know, they, they think that they're gonna get out of their uh, job they don't like, maybe, or, you know, it's it sort of like, I, I, you know, I give them their fifteen minutes, but it's oh god. Oh. But there's always something. I mean, when we went, were out the other night, Steve, right? There's a program on about uh, a spider that's a foot long and eats chicken. No one's, <laughs> no one's talking I about don't know it. What to start? What do you mean? What do you mean? No, well, I, I just. I'm sorry. I had to stand up because I thought I was going to explode. What do you mean? There's a spider that's a foot when, long when and eats chicken. There was a program on about it about yeah. how there's this spider in the jungle or something, but yeah. I missed it because it was out. But no one's talking about that in the papers. <laughs> that's to me. That's that's a worry. <laughs> that's about why. In case it nicks your Sunday roast. What do you mean? No, it well, no, but if it likes chicken, no, Rick. You know, yeah, yeah. In, in like two years' time, who knows what it might. I know. Like. It move up the evolutionary ladder. No, it start liking Carl, then humans. Yeah, no, I'm not exactly. yeah. about the chicken bit because I eat chicken. That isn't that shocking. But the fact it's a foot long, <laughs> and and no one's it's just on on a Thursday night. No one's talking about it. <laughs> No. What do you expect from this? It's got a, its own PR. What do you want? What do you want this spider to be to be famous? What? What? Where is it? Where is it? It's in the jungle. It's not worrying anyone then, is it? It's not going to move. Well, why, it's not well, going to. What do you mean? What do you mean it's not going to move? Well, is it going to get here? Is it going to get on a bus? These waves and that—they come in bananas and all that. So don't worry about it. So uh, <laughs> I'm not. If you're going to be like that. Anyway, listen, um, we better line up Babushka, we better play that surely, because I know you need to analyse those lyrics. Yeah. Um, that's very important to you, I know. We've still got that cork, uh, Oh, hitting. cork on their head's gonna be great. We're gonna put his little head down and really we'll give it a firing. Sponsored by Linda Respond. <laughs> Jess's Girl by Rick Springfield. And the reason I played that is twofold. One, it's one of the prizes we're giving away. It's an album called Rock Gods, and that's with a Z, right, and an umlaut <laughs> over the O. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it's got it's got Kiss, Judas Priest, Steve the Darkness. It's, I mean, it really is good. It's all it's all your classic um, rock tracks. The other reason I want to play it is because I like that song. It's a great little up with bubblegum pop song, rock. You know, great. But it's got one of the worst lyrics in it. He's, uh, you know, he's worried about, um, bringing up the fact that he loves his girlfriend's, uh, his, his uh, his bo uh, mate's girlfriend. And he goes, I'll bring it up, he goes, uh, I, I, you know, I tell her that I love her, but, um, the point may be moot. <laughs> Just <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't use that in a rock song. <laughs> yeah. The point may be moot. 
Well, I was listening to, uh, yeah. Christian O'Connell on the breakfast show when he had the Bounty Hunter thing running a couple of weeks back, and, um, I don't know what happened, but anyway, he ended up with Brian Adams in the studio doing a live session. Brian, you know, good nature or whatever, yeah. but you can't help but feel with Brian that he sort of, he thinks that he's Bruce Springsteen, but yeah. there's something wrong. I mean, he's got the voice and the guitar, he can play and everything, but yeah. there was a lyric, and he, he, he played it completely earnestly, and it was a session, and the lyric was something, it was from his recent album, and the lyric was along the lines of, and I, I'm paraphrasing, but it was along the lines of, um, uh, I I'm sat in my hotel room, there's a knock at the door and I get kind of nervous. I'm hoping it's you, it's just room service. <laughs> <laughs> Which is extraordinary, but Christian came up with the best, uh, it came, they finished it, and obviously Christian was thinking, what did I say? And he came up with the best answer if you've had a session that you're not entirely convinced by. He just said quite simply, that sounded great. That's good. Which is amazing. That, yeah. Who are you complimenting there? The engineer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the sound oh, recordist. God. What does that mean? That's great. That sounded great. Yeah, good. We got some good mics. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Brian Adams. Is it true he bought the pub next door to him and closed it down because they were noisy? I hope so. Yeah, that's a good. That's what yeah, money's yeah, yeah. for. Oh, that exactly. is what money's for, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely right. Waking up the neighbours. That was his album, wasn't it? That, that was. Right. That, that's that's that right. was. I don't know if that was before or after that. Whether it was related or not. Well, if you but buy a house next to a pub, you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. So move, rather than ruining the fun for everyone. It's more good advice from Carl Pilkington. Carl, oh, while we're talking to you, we should give these answers to Rockbusters. It's the big quiz. Um, and of course, the winner this week goes forward to play in the grand final yeah. in six weeks' time, where they get to win all these amazing gifts. We signed, a signed Homer, drawn, yeah. um, especially stuff, yeah. for, for Carl by Matt Groening. Uh, Nigel Tufnell signed rare poster. Uh, they're, they're amazing. Well, should we give away a sort of, uh, maybe a, a, a original print, a behind the scenes of extras? We've got some amazing yeah, pictures, filming fun. extras. I was uh, thinking of the other day, you know like I'm how excited I am to be with Carl and let off corks on his head? Well our editor, long suffering editor Nigel, we'd worked with Ben Stiller, Kate Winslet, Sam Jackson, all these people for eight weeks, it was amazing. But my highlight, I, I was that thought about it, and my highlight was dressing Nigel up, our editor, in a baby grow. Sure. It was, I planned it, we got the, 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 um, department, um, uh, costume department hired it and we dressed up and it looked brilliant, didn't it? Yeah. And it's just- And it's that is BBC licence fee money <laughs> going towards you <laughs> dressing up your editor. Because you didn't pay for it. <laughs> the BBC paid for it, so that <laughs> is how your money has been spent, people. But, but, it's available on the DVD again. Exactly. Nothing's wasted. Which you have to buy for <laughs> 15 quid. <laughs> Sure. So, yeah, it's, it's, a win -win it's like it's the whole thing is one big reality game show, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, anyway, so the answers, give us the give us the go on, give us the clue. I haven't got an idea. Go on, give me the clue then again. Right. Well, do you want to say who the winner is or no? Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's hear the answers. Please. Uh, first, first clue was uh, if you get a bulb when it's young, you yeah. look after it and that you teach it stuff. Yeah. What's going on there? Go yeah. on. The initial was R. Yeah. Right. That was that was razor light. All right. Raise a light, you raise a light. Raise yeah. Light. Okay. Kinda works. Yeah, Second it didn't matter one. what sort of bulb it was then. <laughs> it was very sure. specific. Uh, Go, in mind. Go on. People have a problem doing this when they get home from a night out drinking. Yeah. What's the problem they're having? They have a problem getting the key in. Getting the key in, that key in, key in, key in. That's the That's awful. Works. That doesn't count. Works. Key in. And they got it right. <laughs> it's keen. It's keen. It's one to awful. Uh, awful, the last awful, one, awful. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah. Uh, that, the initial I was C, that was Caesars. Caesars, Caesars, Caesars. They managed to get that as well. Who's three. I love the fact that even he knows they managed to get that as well. Did anyone get all three? Yeah, a few people. That's did. terrible. Okay, Caesars. who was the first one? Who I don't first? know what it says about XFM and its listeners that people are getting these answers, right? I know. Go on then. I mean, horrific. But anyway, we're going to give it, and he goes forward, as I say, for the big, pri the big prizes in uh, six weeks' time. It's Paul in Bookham. Where done? Paul well, Bookham, but also he does get um, the uh, complete series of uh, Alias, League of Gentlemen, that Rock Gods album. Um, so you know, it's, it's, it's pretty good. But Open Water on DVD and a chance to win all those prizes. Brilliant. Yeah. Coming up next, a court smacking a bald man yeah. on the bumps mm. really hard. London, it's your city. XFM 104.9 <laughs> playing Green Day. Uh, the studio's falling apart. I know, his microphone broke. I'm mine broke. Rick, I don't know why uh, Lindauer's, the sparkling wine, <laughs> will be associated with this shambles of a show. It is falling apart. This is awful, this studio. It's got to be fixed. Right? Right now, Carl, come on, here. It's the time where I'm going to. Let a cork off. Do you want to film this, Steve? Yeah, the that'll be available that on the website next week, com. So see Carl getting hit. One bloke suggested we leave the metal cap on because it's get a better pitch. Mm -hmm. But we'll take that. <laughs> He's staying. <laughs> it's dead out. Let's get the camera ready. Get the camera ready. 
Ready? So, if you've just joined us, um, we are yeah. using some Lindauer's sparkling wine <laughs> to basically, well, what can I say? We fire a cork at Carl's round right, ready? head. Ready? Hang, on, hang on a sec, let me just put the headphones on. Right, film this then. Okay. <laughs> it's in position, look. Just firing right. up. Okay, Carl, Carl, come on there so we can see your head a little bit. I want, we want to get the noise, the microphone there. Right, ready? Hold on. Good. So you're just right. doing it. Hold on. Now, it's in position. <laughs> what if it... Oh. Ready? Yep. Oh, God, it... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's like jackass. <laughs> did it hurt? Me. What do you mean, did it hit you? I saw it just... I... It, I went off, it went off course, did it? Just glanced, did it? Right, Lindau, is you going to send us um, eight more bottles, please? <laughs> yeah, we're going to get this right. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Homesick. Kings of Convenience. Beautiful. Yeah, on XFM 104.9. Well, that's nearly the end of our first of six shows, I'm our just summertime special. Some of, the, some of the highlights, Rick, so far today. I don't know what you've made of it. We, we Finger up the arse. Finger up the arse. <laughs> Testicles early on. Uh, um, Orientals Kent, don't age very well. Kent, Kent, bit of racism. Bit of racism with the uh, Germany's full of cants. Yeah, that, that was a highlight. That isn't swearing. Um, um, cork, cork on the air, champagne down the electrical <laughs> works. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. good. Just to, the, the finale is, uh, it's monkey news, obviously. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, yeah. Well, there isn't, uh, I've been away, haven't I? Oh. Uh, there's been no monkey news, you can't get- No, no, but I haven't had, had a proper chance to sort of, you know, uh, Carl, your monkey news is of spurious towels from the 17th <laughs> century sometimes. So let's have one of those. No, let's have a monkey the, who dressed as Zorro and they thought he was uh, a woodsman, but when they took his head off he was only he was a four foot hairy chimp. <laughs> let's have one of those ridiculous stories. Well, we've, we've done that though. But uh, do you want to go back on some of the ones? Oh, for sort of just recap? what no, is the monkey one. news? There must have been some monkey news this right. week. The only thing that sort of stood out, do you know, like, they're having problems- You're just making this up! Where's your information? Where's the piece of paper? Where's the document? What is this? Because I've been away, so I haven't got anything right, let's just hit, let's, 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 But let's it's hear bad it enough out. when he's reading it he gets it wrong. When he's just riffing, it's gonna be absolute twaddle. Let's hear it out. Right, do you know, like, they're having problems getting new, new, um, people to be policemen? Oh, for f- Go on. They've, uh, in America- they're taking them on to, uh, sort of join the SWAT team. <laughs> They've taken what on? Some little monkeys. Okay. Uh, giving them walkie talkies and all that. And, uh. Well, they can't talk. <laughs> they're just walkies. They don't have to. <laughs> yeah, giving them some walkies. What do you no, mean? What, just what was. They're given commands and that. And, uh, they go. Well, so it's one way. They, they tell them. They've got the little thing well, strapped to them. They're good at, like, Getting into small, sp- sort of, you know, small places and that, and sort of, you know, cracking stuff and all that. Like I say, it's just half a story I just picked up on. That's not a story. Well, what do you want? Monkey news. Well, I'll, I'll get some better stuff next week, but I've literally like got up a plane. This is the ago. worst. Uh, this is one of the worst shows we've ever done. And that's saying something, Rick. This is done some tripe. <laughs> this is nothing. And to end with the the police in America have given monkeys walkie talkies. That's nothing. That is a disgrace. And what do you mean that you've not had enough time to prepare? We've been off air for eighteen months. Yeah. yeah what? There's been no accumulated monkey news in that time. It's got to keep it fresh, though, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Great one. Well, more-